you have got forth before us. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because we know that in the coming days, you have gone far ahead before us to make every path straight. And Lord, we give you thanks. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the joyful people in the house, give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. Scripture says, don't clap your hands on your people. And give the Lord a shout of triumph with a voice of triumph. Give the Lord a shout. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Receive our worship this morning. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Can we all sing it? I look at my life, every voice sing it. I look at my life, I see the sea, what God has done. I look around, I see the beauty of His word. I look at my life, and I 
That we all sing now, Ebube, proclaiming loud, say, Ebube, the one is worthy of a song. Ebube, Ebube, for the last time, say now, Ebube, Ebube, Father, we give you praise. We look at our lives and we see all you have done. We look around and we see the beauty of your words. We bless you, Lord. Give God praise this morning. Come on, anybody excited for the end of October? Anybody seen the goodness of the Lord? Give God praise this morning. Yesterday, while we rehearsed for today, um, we got a song, not, like, not our song, but we just got the leading to sing the song over us this morning, and we're going to declare the song together. Um, we're singing it to ourselves, we're singing it over ourselves, we're singing it for ourselves, and it's in preparation and uh, a prophetic declaration for the coming parts left for 2021 for the rest of 2021 for november and december um, all that we have seen up until this very last day of october we are going to declare it in song that god's best is still ahead of us that from this point after this point backwards all of it is going to be our past and the rest of the year is going to be the best for us it's going to be the finest. You know, just like the Bible tells us of Jesus and his first miracle in Canaan. You know, when that miracle happened, the, the, the elite of that party asked the question, who serves the best wine at the end? It's only God that does things that way. It's only God that can serve the best at the end. So we believe that God's best for us is, is at the end. And that's what, that's what we want to sing about this morning. Because my best can go with me As I step into my destiny My best can go with me as I step into my destiny now We walk to freedom What we see right now We'll never see again As we cross over to your promise Our past behind us Nothing can stop us now As we cross over to your promise As we cross over to your promise, yeah Let's sing, we walk, say We walk to freedom What we see right now We'll never see again as we cross over to your promise, our best, our best behind us, nothing, nothing can stop us now. As we cross over to your promise, as we cross over, as we cross over to your Let's sing over time. We walk, we walk to freedom. What we see right now. What we 
see right now We'll never see again As we cross over to your promise Our past behind us Nothing can stop us now As we cross over to your promise As we cross over to your... Yeah, it's on the screen now. Let's sing it one more time. Say, we walk to freedom What we see right now We'll never see again. Come on, put the melody. Rest over to your mind. I'm back behind us. Nothing can stop us now. Hey, as we cross over. Come on, let it we want to we want to freedom. What we see, what we see. As we cross over, as we cross over to your pride, as we cross over, as we cross over to your pride, as we cross over, hey, as we cross over into November, as we cross over, as we cross over to your pride, as we cross over, as we cross over to your pride, as we cross over, as we cross over to your the grave back into life from under shame into your light there are no chains on the other side we're crossing over over out of the grave back into life from under shame into your light there are no chains on the other side, we're crossing over. Oh, say out of the grave, back into the land, from the chain, to your land, there are no chains. On the other side, we're crossing over. I want to hear just a voice. Out of the grave, back into life, from under shame. Chains on the other side, we're crossing over, over out of the grave, back into life from under shame, in into your life. There are no chains on the other side, we're crossing over. Cause my past can go with me As I step into my destiny Yes, my past can go with me As I step into my destiny now We walk to freedom what we see right now, we'll never see again As we cross over to your promise Our past behind us Nothing can stop us now As we cross over to your promise As we cross over to your promise as we cross over to out of the grave back into life from under shame in to your life there are no chains on the other side we're crossing over over out of the grave
Come on, I want to adjust the church. No chords, no keyboard. Say, out of the grave. I'm crossing over. Come on, sing it, sing it. Out of the grave. Yeah, that's it. Something's building in the spirit. Hey, raise it up, say, out of the cry. There are no things. I feel Jesus in the room. Hey, out of the cry. Come on, guys, declare it in a sweet melody for me. Make sure, make sure. All of the grave. Anybody crossing over into greater things for November, into greater things for December. Hey, I see it, I see it, I see it. I see December 31st night. My feet is full of bouncing. My house is full of praise. I've got a reason to scream. Hey! Cause my best skin goes with me As I step into my destiny My best skin goes with me As I step into my Now See we walk, everybody say We walk to freedom what we see right now, we'll never see again. As we cross over to your promise, our past, our past, behind us, nothing, nothing, it's love us. Pass from a hala bahaya. As we cross over to your promise, say we walk, we walk, yeah. What we see right now, we'll never see again. As we cross over to your promise, say our past, our past behind us, nothing can stop us now. I feel we should sing it one more time. Out of the grave, back into life from under shame. In to your life, there are no chains on the other side. We're crossing over. Oh, say out of the way that we do life from under shame to your life. There are no chains on the other side. We're crossing over. Set the drums in the church. Just the drums and the just say out of the Are 
you crossing? Still a drum, still a drum. Out of the grave. I see it, I feel it, testimonies are everywhere around. I see it, and I feel it, testimonies are everywhere around. All through November and December. I see it, I feel it, oh, yeah. testimonies are everywhere Everyone say, I see it, I feel it, testimonies are everywhere around. One more time, declare. I see it, yes, Lord. I feel it, testimonies are everywhere around. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise. We are glad and at the same time excited. We are glad for what you have done. We're excited for what you're doing. Oh yes, blessed be your name.
worship and wonder, it's what I've come to do. In your presence, what am I supposed to do? I fall down at your feet, I'll praise you as you please. Cause in your presence, I find peace. I fall down at your feet, I'll praise you as you please. Presence of our peace. Worship and wonder, it's what I've come to do. Lost in your presence, what am I supposed to do? I fall down at your feet, I praise you as you please. I see your presence of our peace. Cause I fall down at your feet I praise you as you please In your presence I find peace There's no one like you in all the earth 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 There's no one like you in all the earth Lost in your presence. Lost in your presence. What am I supposed to do? Yes, I fall and at your feet. I'll praise you as you please. In your presence, I find me. Hey, I fall and at your feet. And I'll praise you as you please. Oh.
like you in all the earth. No one like you in all the earth. No one like you in all the earth. No one like you in For last time, say, there's no one like you in all the earth, Lord. No one like you in all the earth. There's no one like you, Lord. There's no one like you in all the earth. of faithfulness there is none like you none will come close your mercy is forever your mercy is forever your love remains your love remains your love remains indeed every knee bow every name that is named bows nations governments dispensations they all come bind down for there is no like you for there is no like you for there is no like you there will never be any like you there will never be any like you there will never be any like you oh lord we bless your name we bless your name we bless your name. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for loving us. For loving us all the same. For loving us. I want to say, even though we do not believe, you are faithful. For you will not deny yourself. You loved us when we thought we didn't deserve it. You loved us when we didn't even know we needed saving. For your love that stands sure and eternal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. God's people will say amen. amen. With a good clap offering, you will say amen. amen. With a good, good clap offering, you will say amen. amen. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Why do we come to church if we cannot celebrate our God? The gathering of God's people. Let me tell you guys something. Wait. Don't be too, don't come to church and you have gotten to the point where you are so cautious. Your cautiousness now hinders your praise. This gathering is not to you. You gather to him. Do you understand that? But if you are the one that is big in the meeting, Unko, by your actions, sometimes you are showing that you are the big one. Oh boy, nobody they look your face. Relax. 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 And you see, if what other people think, if, other, if you think other people might be looking at you in church during praise, during worship, or during prayer, if that is, as, is so powerful that it stops you from worshiping or praying or praising, you must understand that you're already in the bondage of men. Do you understand that? And such people will make no progress. 
they will make no progress. Because, they are, you, know, you know, Paul talked about how uh, when Paul prayed, Peter prayed, one of them said that the Lord will deliver him from the expectations of men. Do you understand how, how powerful that prayer is? For example, why is it you come to church on a Sunday and you can't even say amen, amen, amen. It's, church is not about other people. If it's between you and your God, it won't be heavy. Your lips won't be heavy. So today this morning, can we give our Lord praise? Father, we thank you. 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 Oh, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Please open your mouth and just be thanking him. You can say hallelujah. You can say, Father, I thank you. But make sure with the fruit of your lips, make sure this morning, not just with the clap offering, with the fruits of your lips, you are blessing the If you don't know what to say, say what we are saying. Say what we are saying. That's how you learn. That's how you learn. Father, we are, faith. we are grateful for your faithfulness. We thank you. For your mercy that remains, we thank you. Your loving kindness is forever. So we thank you. Lift up your hands, everyone. Lift up your hands, everyone, where you are. Let's sing an old song. For you are great. You are the miracle so great. There is no one else like you. Just lift up those hands wherever you are. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do me so great. There is no one else. I can attest to it. There is no of the glory and the honor of each as we close before we
is when the opinions of men no longer deter you. That's one of the ways we know you are not a religious person. You know, when church people sing, there's a song we used to sing as believers. We say, when the spirit of the Lord is upon my soul. You know that song? They say, I will dance. You know the song, the dance they're referring to? Was the dance that David danced to the Lord and took off all his clothes before the nations. Eh? That's the dance. The people singing it, they are not dancing the dance. The dance that somebody danced, that his wife said, you must be very mad. Do you understand the attitude that a man, a king put his clothes? Let me tell you, if Wari pulled his tie in front of TV, you people will think he's running mad. So imagine a king put all his clothes and is dancing on the street. And he says he's dancing to God. I don't care. But so many believers come to church and the opinion of men is so heavy in them and they are singing when the spirit of the Lord. It's time to repent. Give the Lord a big hand where you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's have the confession before the world this morning, everyone. One, two, three, go. With full attention, I receive the word of God under the influence of the Spirit. Therefore, I hear clearly. My eyes see what God is showing me today. My ears hear my instruction. And my heart is able to identify God's word tailored for me. I understand the explanation of the word with evidence of miracles. I submit myself to the correction God is bringing my way. And I receive exact instruction on things I should do and the enablement to do them. Amen. All right, let's be seated. So we started this October revisiting how we entered the year. God's word for us as a church from Mark 9, 23. It says, to him that believe, all things are possible. Therefore, 2021 was declared our year of possibilities. How many of you still believe this is your year of possibilities? So I want to say it again. I will do great things with ease this year. Say, I will do great things with ease this year. Things that were seemingly impossible before... They will now be within my reach. Things that I saw were out, thought were out of my reach. They will now be within arm's reach. I will achieve even more this year. So we went back to our series, Anything is Possible. And we began to teach again on the subject of faith. On the subject of faith. And if you are wondering why we get to teach faith a lot, you must understand this. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. So we must begin to learn how we live because this is how we live. We live by what? Faith. If you don't know faith, then you are not living as a just man. But you are a just person. How many of you are saved? Say, I am saved. You say, after you come into this saved life, this is how you are going to live from here on. You live only by faith. And we've been teaching this, including prayers on Wednesdays, but all that we've been teaching is so that you would do them. The teachings is not so that you would have notes on them. Jesus, you know, you, you need to understand that the, the, the danger of knowing things and not doing them is that you would receive severe punishment. The Bible says from the lips of Jesus, he said, the servants that knoweth the will of his master and doeth it not. He said, the same servant shall be beaten with many blows. He knoweth it, but he does not do it. That servant will be beaten. So the goal there is this. If the person is ignorant, you know, in Acts, the Bible says that in the days of ignorance, God winked. You understand that because they didn't know. But the moment you come into knowledge, responsibility is on your shoulders. So we have gone again to teach on the subject of faith. And this morning I will do a lot to, I will try my best rather to dot the I's, cross the T's. As we know, you can never exhaust any Bible subject. 
You will teach it as best as you have caught in that season. So when we revisit it, we'll see even more. The Bible says to us in John 13, 17, if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. If you know these things, it says you will now get some joy out of it if you do them. Many don't do the word. And it's because they do not continue to behold the word. That's why they do not do the word. You know, Joshua 1 8 says to us that the book of the law should not depart out of our mouth, but therein should we meditate day and night. He says, as long as that word is in your mouth, you are meditating on that word day and night, he said, then will you observe what to do. So one of the reasons why people do not do the word is because they do not continue to behold the word. They are not saying this word. They are not looking at it. Many of us, a year will pass. A whole year will pass. Our eyes will not even look at a physical Bible. And we say that we are believers. That is not true. And that is not proper. So if you really will do the word, then you will continue to behold the word. You know, you must understand this. One of the major key words when it comes to growth in spiritual things and in every natural law is continuity. That word, continue. If you do not continue in a thing, you will not be an expert in that thing. If you don't continue in the word of God, you cannot grow in the word of God. James 1 from verse 20 to the Bible says that, he says you should be doers. He said be, be. It's a, we know that word be is a state of being. It's, it's a state to attain. It says be. It is who you are that determine what you do. It says, be ye doers of the word. Be a person that does the word. Be a person. Have the attitude of response to God's word. Have an attitude that is inclined to take action when he hears the word. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just have that attitude that you are just inclined to obey. What should I do? What should I do? Listen, in interpretation of the word of God, you must understand that there is a place where you begin to say, okay, what does this text say? What are the facts? Let's gather the facts. When we gather the facts, we're saying, okay, uh, this thing mean what? To who was it written? When was it written? What is the key subject here? What is the subtitle? What is this scripture saying? Then the next thing you need to do in interpreting, uh, interpreting scripture, you now begin to connect all these facts that you just gathered to make meaning. After you make meaning, you must get to the point of how do I respond to this thing? Do you understand that? What is the responsibility of this knowledge that I came into? So once you keep hearing and you don't move to the place of responsibility, you must understand that death and stagnation are very close. Death and stagnation is very close. If you keep receiving and you are not obeying, you are not doing, stagnation is very, very close. And you see a bunch of believers who are stagnated in their spiritual life and it's not trickling into their enterprise, their endeavors, as it, as it were, their marriage, their ministry, but they know a lot. And the reason that stagnation is there is because they are not obeying the ones that they know. You don't need a lot of water to even do exploit. All Jesus told Peter for Peter to walk on water was four little words. Come. He says, if it be thou, bid me what? Come. The point where some of us have now become professors of theology and yet there is no exploit in our life is just a proof that the simple instructions and things we supposedly know, we are not working in them. Do you understand that? You are not so, that's why, you know, one of the services recently I said to you that, listen, God has no business of telling you everything God knows. That's not what he wants to do. He wants to reveal to you everything you need to know. Are you getting the idea? You see, they, 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 they look like they are the same, but they are not the same. It's what you need to know that you need to know. There are things that are not your business. 6,000 years of creation was hidden in a few verses. 6,000. You don't need to know it. 
It's not your, you see, it will add no knowledge to you. There are certain things that we argue as believers, and then you begin to wonder, so what exactly are we going to gain when we know where Cain got his wife from? You begin to argue all sorts of arguments. Jesus is brown skin, black skin. Is it the color of the skin that died for you? Was it, is it not blood, blood that you're talking about all along? And if he was a white man, brown man, black man, he's still, he, his blood will still be what color? Good. Are you getting the idea? Some things God knows, they are useless knowledge to you. So don't, we are not in this, in this field of, of, we're not here to know all there is. We are here to know what God wants us to do to the point that we obey it. So James 1 now says to us, he said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. It's so simple. He says, if you are hearing and you are not doing, he says, you are a deceiver of self. You are in some form of self-illusion. You are in this bubble that you have created for yourself. He says, if, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's liking unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholded himself. So he sees himself. And the Bible says, he goeth away and straight away he forgot what manner of the man he was. He said, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth. Are you seeing it? And so I said to you earlier, the reason many do not do the word because they do not what? Continue. The difference between these two men is that one looked and he did what? He continued. The word will never become the word of life without continuity. The word you hear, the word you read will never become word of life. You know, the Bible said to us in 1 John 1, that which we have heard, that which we have seen, that which we have looked to look upon now is the continuity. Are you saying it? He said that is the one we would handle with our hand. And that one we handle is what is called the word of life. So if Sunday morning is where you hear the word of God, you are just a religious person. You are not a believer. You have, you have not, you like to associate. So that when they ask you what church you are telling, you say, Salt City, who's your pastor? Pastor Tobore Davids, you know? You just begin to feel the form. Religion, you like Christianity. Now, John 8, 31. Jesus said, only those that continue in my word are my disciples. Jesus is the one saying it. He said, I know many people are hearing me. When I go to do crusade like this, I will stand and preach. If he fed 5,000 women minus men, I mean 5,000 men minus women and children, imagine that there are at least 12,000 people in that crusade. Do you understand that? So Jesus said, look, when I preach, there's 10,000 to hear me. But I don't call the people that hear me my disciples. Discipleship has nothing to even do with the preacher. He, he is not the one that makes a person a disciple. A disciple makes himself a disciple. Discipleship is a state you attain by followership of the message taught. He said, if you, you, not me, if not, I'm, I will give the word. Do you understand that? I will give the word. He said, but if you continue with the word I give, then are ye my word disciples. So you are the one that attained discipleship. So it's not the number of people that hear the word. It's, it says, if you continue in my word, only then are ye my disciples. And he added... Verse 32 now says, it says, then, then, then is a function of consequence. You understand that? It's a function of consequence. It said, then you shall know the truth. And the truth has the capacity to set you free. So certain bondage that you are going through and certain hardship that you have in your life and you want to go away, the reason it's not gone away yet is that you do not know the truth. And you are yet to know the truth because you are not continuing in the world. The difference between the two men we just saw in James is that one continued to behold the world. He went back. He listened to the teaching again. 
He made the confessions out of it. Let me tell you this, and I will emphasize it consistently. A man who goes to church without a notebook cannot be continuing the word of God. The faithless handwriting is sharper than the best memory. Keep your big man is keeping your spirit man small. That's your big manity that makes you think you are hearing everything I'm saying. It's keeping your spirit man a child. The faithless, even those that write are not hearing everything I'm saying. So all these things, look, relax. Let's go to the word of God. So continuity is what produces obedience in the world. To continue, to behold. The Bible says, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Romans 2, 7. The true patient continuance. Romans 2, 7. Patient continuance. So you have to continue. In Acts 2.42, describing the church, the Bible says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. They did not just continue. There was an attitude with their continuity. Steadfastly. I can tell when a person is going to break even. One of the things I'll show you today is this. Faith is a law. Yeah, it has no respect of person. So is life a law. If a person is not continuing in whatever he's doing steadfastly, if you continue, listen, if you continue, you will break even. If you continue steadfastly, you will break even quickly and begin. And in, 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 a big, in a big proportion. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's just, it's just how it is. It's just how it is. And you know, people talk about um, men who watch football. People look at uh, Ronaldo at 36, playing football like that. All the people who have played football with him, who were in the academy with him, and all of that. Go and listen to their report of him. Nobody is surprised. Are you getting what I'm saying? Nobody is surprised. This is... When you see the ethic the person puts, do you understand? The, the fellow footballers and question now, nah, this guy, the ethics, the work he puts, the work he puts, it's, it's just a law. It's not, some people, you, some people might be thinking they did not choose me. So the key word is continuity. In Colossians 4, to the Bible says, continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. Continue. The reason why many don't see results in prayer is they do not continue in prayer. In Romans 12, 12, the Bible says, rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instantly in prayer. So continuance is the key. That's the key. You mustn't get weary. I like the way Galatians 6 and 9 put it. It said, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. When we were praying yesterday in the morning, or Miss Light said to you, we are in due season now. We are in due season. But only those who will not faint. Only those who will not faint. Look at the, 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 the word if there is a probable statement, true or false. If we faint not. Depending on if you will not faint. The only Bible says in Hebrews that we are not of them that drop back unto perdition. He said, for any who will drop back, he said, his soul will take no pleasure in that person. God will look at you and say, weak stock, weak stock, weak stock. This is not the guys. This is not the guys. This is not the guys. Jesus didn't endure the cross to the end so that you will give up. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. See what we just saw now in Galatians 6 9. Paul said the same to the Thessalonians. You know, in Second Thessalonians 3, 13, it says, very short, it says, be ye brethren, be not, it says, but ye brethren, sorry, be not weary in well-doing. Be not weary. So continue, continue in the word. Continue in the word. Again, Hosea 6 and 3, it says, then shall we know if we follow unto know the Lord. We know if we what? Follow on. 
follow on. Follow on. So you will get the fullness if you continue. Many of you want to know everything at the beginning. Young people don't want to finish school anymore. They want to get the degree in, in 200 level. There, let me say this to you guys. There are things only age and time can teach you. There are no shortcuts. There are things in this life only age and time can teach you. There are no shortcuts. No, absolutely no shortcuts. So we learn faith so that we can do faith. And to do faith, we must continue in practice what we have learned. If you do not do the things you have learned this October, you know, I have to give you the whole gospel. I am not here just to excite you by some word. In, in look, in fact, one of the things I would, let you, I would like for you to be enlightened about when it comes to the word of prophecy, yeah, is that a prophecy, after it is given, a robust prophecy, after it is given, many times comes with an instruction. Did you hear what I said? It must be guarded with words and instruction. So don't just think that, hey, girl, you are blessed, and you shout, amen, that's all. Who not blessed now? Can you show me who is not blessed? It is who manifests the blessing. That's what we are talking about. Are you getting the point? So you must be instructed. So yes, we talked about faith again. You are stepped up and all of that, but I'm saying to you, there are things that you must do. There are certain things that depend on you. We have, look, if you do not do what you have learned, what you know will be stolen from you. In Mark 4, verse 4, in the parable of the seed, the word being the seed, because first of all, show us in 14, Mark 4, 14 said to us that the seed is the word of God. Then you see, you'll not be able to um, translate that in, in, in verse 4. Go back to verse 4 now, the same Mark 4. He said, and it shall come to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowl of the air, being the devil, it came to de devour that which fell. The ones that fell by the wayside are those who did not understand. They are the ones who did not continue. They did not, they did not continue. They did not continue. They did not continue. Because understanding is a result of continuance. You are reading the Bible, you don't understand, don't stop reading, keep reading. Say, this thing is not for me. The devil wants you to think that there's not people like you that should read the Bible. Read it again. How many of you here have read a scripture before, gone back, and you saw it from a different light? Read it again. I'm preaching to you now. Those of you who have been in this church, how many times have we been preaching the same scripture? The same scripture. New, new light. New, new perspective. You understand what I'm saying? New light. So the devil wants you not to understand. And the way he gets you not to understand is to stop you from reading at all, from looking at all, from listening at all. Do you understand that? So understanding comes from continuance. Any skill you are learning, if they tell you to tread a sewing machine, the first time it will be difficult. After a while, it becomes automated. What happened? Continuity. You are driving. As you are driving like this, Times happen, you are just trying to look down. You know, when you start driving, you want to look at the brake before you match the brake every time. And you are forgetting that you are about to destroy people's lives. So you, but after a while, actually with your own car, the car is you, you are the car, the car is your body. You just know, by, you, are not, you are not consciously trying to step on the brake. You just know that this is brake, it just happens. It's an extension of you. Why? Continuity. It is that continuity that produces understanding and obedience. Continuity. So, if you don't continue, you will not understand. In Acts 8, 30, 31, Philip saw the Ethiopian eunuch. He was reading Elijah. He was reading of Elijah. And Philip asked him, he says, Understandest what thou readest? Do you understand what you are reading? If you don't understand, it will be taken. It will be taken. 
You know, many want what we have, the supernatural, the real supernatural, not the spectacular, yeah? supernatural. But they can't continue. In Mark 10, the Bible talks about a man called, that, the, it, that was described as the rich young ruler. He came to meet Jesus and he asked Jesus, this thing that you are doing, how do I get it? And Jesus said he should keep the commandment, all the laws. He now said that he has been keeping them since he was a child. Jesus said, really? You're sure? Said, You're sure? He said, yes. Jesus now said to the man, one thing thou lackest though, sell all you have and give it to the poor. Everything changed. The man did not understand that the laws that he said he had been keeping from a child, all of them are centered around love. Do you know when Jesus told him that? Mark 10, I think 22, please. The Bible said the man was filled with great sorrow. He was filled with great sorrow. He walked away. Not many people walked out on Jesus. The rich young ruler. The Bible says, for he had great possession. You know they use great to describe what he person gets. <laughs> if I when the guy begin to think of where he wants her to see a property from, he looked Jesus like, really? This is your eternal life. You go keep her. I go keep my money. <laughs> you know, bros, don't worry. Hold your own. I hold my own. But he changed though because although there's a dispute on that, so it's, there's no resolute authority. Um, the, Bible, the Bible scholars say, just as Nicodemus became a disciple later and gave to the ministry of Jesus, this is the guy who was now later called the son of consolation, Barnabas. So... But the point is this. This guy, he couldn't continue. He still continue. In, my, in, in, in John 6, the Bible record of, I think, 65, 66, 67. We'll just put it on the screen, I'll paraphrase, but let them see it. The Bible talked about how that Jesus preached a gospel. What did he preach? He said he does not want anybody that the Father did not give him. Only those who the Father bring, that's who he wants. The people say it's a hard gospel. The Bible says, and the people that were with him, they left him and walked with him no more. You see why they did not make it to the disciples' list? They did not continue. Are you all listening to what I'm saying? They did not continue. So for faith to work, you will continue the practices you are learning here. You will continue. And I am not perfect, but I can say to you what we've been teaching you. It's not cunningly devised fables. It's the word of God. It is the word of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Know this and know it well. Faith does not respect anybody. So faith is not a respecter of men. Faith works. Faith works for anybody. If your faith is not producing results, it's not because faith is not working. It's that there is something in you Huh? Which, is what, which is what we're going to climb in, to, to, in, in the services today, both of them. There is something in you that is not working. It's not faith that is not working. Man quickly quarrels with the tools instead of checking himself. He quarrels with the tools. Have you ever seen somebody trying to use a particular key to open the door? That's the key to that door. The guy has done and done, kicking the door, already complaining verbally. He's becoming violent. Somebody else goes to that place, take the same key, open the door easily. Have you seen that scenario before? It's why you now, you are saying, I'm not supposed to the key be this. I said, I'm to bring the key. You go bring another key. You are just, for some reason, you don't want to just accept. I don't know how to turn it. Faith is a law. That's what the Bible says. Romans 3, 27, the Bible says, where is boasting then? The Bible says it is excluded. It says, by what law? Of works? Nay. It said, no. But the law of what? Faith. So faith works for everybody and anybody. That's what it means when they say something is a law. What is a law? A law is anything that has a predictable outcome. Do you understand? 
If we throw this handkerchief up, it must come down. That is a word. It's a law. Huh? So, if Idara comes and throws the handkerchief up and it does not come down, it's not the handkerchief fault. Idara should be saying, how I throw and pass. <laughs> sure you understand that. Because faith is a word. It's a law. It's not a respecter of persons. This should not make any of you feel unworthy. This should make those of you who were feeling unworthy feel worthy of using faith. Faith works for anybody. Whether the person has been born again for 20 years, faith will work for him. If he got born again yesterday, faith works for him. If he got born again at the beginning, that's the idea. Faith is a law. He works for everybody and anybody. But let me show you guys a few things. Number one, laws work whether or not you believe them. If you are a skeptic, we just gave an example of the law of gravity. Say you are a skeptic. You say you don't believe in the law of gravity. And you say you are going to climb this trust, this light trust, and you will just not fall when you... Let yourself go. Eh? Whether you believe in the law of gravity or not, if you climb to this place and you let yourself go, you definitely will lose some teeth. It's, no, it's not your belief that... <laughs> you understand? You say, I don't believe I'm old. I don't believe say what go up, they come down. No problem, go up. <laughs> no. So whether you believe a law or not, it is what? Working. Do you understand that? Number two, whether you know a law or not, the law works. It is not your knowledge of a law that fabricates or authenticates the law. I'll give you a typical example. Nigerian police will tell you, ignorance is not an excuse. Have you heard that one before? They say, you don't know say this road now one way. I don't know, I don't know. Oga, Oga, you have committed a crime. <laughs> and, and there's no... There's, see, what, how you feel. Do you understand that? You can have legit problems. Huh? I got wedded February 13th, 2016. February 12th. Huh? I was leaving the mainland where we were going to do the wedding. I was going back to my house on the island. But, you know, organ organizing and organizing now. I know the law. That was not ignorance. First, uh, forgetting of the law does not excuse you. I was eating in the car. I'm on the phone. I'm the groom. People are calling me now. People are traveling. I was eating in the car. I was on the phone. And it was a slow drive, close to Jack on Day roundabout. And the guys were just there, two trucks. See, Oga, see the wedding card. Now, tomorrow will be my wedding. Oga, Oga. Before we're talking, they don't lose one tire now. They don't lose the tire now, now, now. When they lose the tire, you just understand that, bro. There's no, <laughs> there's no, there's no fast one. Because even if they leave now, we're going to need to pump this. Do you understand? And there's no vulcanizer here. <sighs> okay. What do you want? <laughs> Let's get to the root. You know those your I need to go, I need to go. When they left the tire just now, they're like, I need to go nowhere. What, what's the hell? Okay, what were you saying? So whether you are ignorant of a law, whether you believe the law or, or not, whether you forgot, you, you genuinely meant no harm. Do you understand? You didn't mean any, any harm. I, did, that, did that mean harm to anybody that I've not eaten since morning, my wedding is the next day? I just, you mean nobody harm. If you break the law, you break the law. Do you understand that? They say there's a red light, red light. You didn't know that that place even have traffic light. <laughs> but you get the idea. So the law works whether you believe it or not. And the interesting thing is this. To be ignorant of a law is to be on the wrong side, which means every law that you are ignorant of is automatically working against you. 
Those that know the law become advantageous. Those that don't know the law, go to a police station, you will understand what I'm saying. You will see people crying like, they say, I don't know, no. they, say, they say, if you do like this, they say, you don't know those, they say, see, Nigerians don't know Nigerian constitution. So when you go to police, you be hearing, they don't say if you do like this, now so that they don't have more. They say, so so they say they do that, but they are going to raise money. I be no, no, I be no, no, they don't go bring money, come. Knowing it all, or not. If they, you know how that they say, cough you. Cough you is such and such time. You didn't listen to radio or anyone. You, you genuinely didn't know. When you're strolling home normally, I think you Nigerians can understand what I'm saying, right? So, faith is a law, and inside this law, there are principles. And one of those principles is what we began to look at last week Sunday, which is the principle of confession. The Bible says to us in Romans 10.10, 10, So for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That man, every time he seeks deliverance, every time he finds himself stuck at a point, every time he's somewhere, where he really, really needs to get out of. The man must realize that if he does not use his mouth, he's not going to come out of that place. For with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Therefore, you must open your mouth. The Bible said to us, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, he said, believe that you would receive them. He said, and you shall have them. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. It says, whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray. Let me tell you the truth. You know how Mark eleven twenty three 23 also says to us, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, whosoever shall say, whosoever, that tells you the, the law of faith, is not a respecter of persons. So anyone can talk to the mountain. Say, whosoever can speak to this mountain, mountain. It says, if that person will speak to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but he shall believe those things which he said. That's what I'm doing. It says, and he shall have those things which he said. I want to know something very powerful. You need to hear your pastor's voice. You need to hear me as your pastor. But your mountain needs to hear your voice. Did you hear what I said? It's very important that you have an instructive voice over your life. But it's very important that you never forget that the mountain in your life needs to hear your voice. One thing that is destroying faith in the city that where our church is located, and I believe in the life of a lot of believers across this world, is low self-esteem. People don't believe themselves. A man that does not believe himself cannot put his faith to work. Because the law of faith in Mark 11 and verse 23, the law of faith says, if the man will say to the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and he shall not doubt in his heart. Rather, he will believe the thing, not the one the pastor said, not the one the bishop on TV said, he will believe what? The things which he said. Are you understanding what I'm saying? A lot of people in, the, in, the, in this, in this um, what I would call a wrong atmosphere of religion where the church is tilting towards. Listen to me. It is true. I'm very important. Please look at me. Let me say this to you. Because there has to be a balance. The Bible may declare that by a prophet, he let them out. By a prophet, he brought them into the land, right? So there is the place of God's servant over your life. It's to guide you. Indeed, I taught this before when we were teaching how to pray this, the word in small groups. The pastor is to give you the word, which you in turn should use. Do you understand that? That's the place. So the word for the year 2022, God said to me that next year, 2022, is our year of much more. I've given you the word. Your job is to take that word and appropriate it. 
So we must begin to see the balance because there are those, why I said we want to put the balance and I asked you to look up is this. When I say to you that you have to believe your own words, I didn't say to you that you don't need a pastor or a prophet over your life. Do you understand that? So there's the people who are now saying, I beg, I beg, I beg. As long as I can read the Bible, as long as I can, you are in error. It is God that sets a man over people. And man will always be God's method, irrespective of the frailty of men. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the fact that the fact that one man somewhere may have gotten it wrong and done some things wrong or made some mistake, it doesn't mean God has stopped using men. Because the abundance of fake dollars have not taken the value of dollars. Do we understand that? So don't go fall into that extreme. So stay, look, there is safety in moderation. Stay in the perfect middle. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? So you need a, serv- a servant of God over your life. You know, God talked about how he was instructing the prophets and the pastors now in Acts 20 and verse 28. He said, take heed to thyself and over the church of God, which the Holy Ghost have made thee overseer. That you should feed them. So the Holy Ghost makes a man overseer over the church. Are you getting the idea? We should not be abused. We should also not, because Paul began to say that so that we will not lord it. We are not doing this so that we will lord it over your faith. So we must know that place. And as the Bible says, it says we should honor them that labor among you. Give them double honor. There's that honor. However, don't fall into the other extreme too. Who now say, as long as I have my man of God, my man of God, then I don't need to... There is no faith that is that irresponsible. Such a person is not even in faith at all. Such a person have not entered idol worshiping. Even the angel that appeared on the island of Patmos and John was to bow, the angel said, you don't worship me. The angel came from heaven, no. It's not men on the earth that we are, are you all getting what I'm saying? So, The point is this, have a prophet of God who, when diligent, he will consistently deliver unto you the counsel of God. That's what God told Moses. That's the arrangement between, uh, you know, through the, 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 the Mount of Jethro, how God began to help Moses structure ministry. He said, this is what is going to happen. He said, you will be for the people to God and to the people God, do you understand that? Like this, you will take the prayers of the people to God and you will bring the counsel of God to the people. He said that you will instruct them on the work that they must do. Now, as I'm saying this thing now, eh, my, my, mind is, my, 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 my mind as a man is even more vexed at this spirit of religion because how religious can you be than the Old Testament? Huh? In the Old Testament, the Bible put a structure where that Moses would take the, the consigns of the bodies of the people to God. Then with that response, Moses is going to bring the counsel of God to the people. And God said, told him, when you have now brought my counsel to the people, he said, instruct them on the work that they must what? Do. So that they will know how to conduct themselves. So even the Old Testament people who had not the Holy Ghost on their inside, they had work that they must do. When the prophet of God with a shiny face came. Are you all getting the point there? So, modern day believers who think that because they have a man of God over their life, therefore they should not pray every day, therefore they should not, they have no need to read. Just as the pastor told you, you are going to make it, you're going to make it. My prophet don't talk come. My prophet don't talk come. He don't see. He don't see. My we don't see lamb. And we begin to give appellations that are beyond the scripture. We should not reckon any man beyond what is written. Are you getting what I'm saying? God does not have grandchildren. And this teaching is not so that you are in dishonor. To be in dishonor is to your own detriment. It's to know that there's a place where you honor the man that God has sent to you. You honor not, and that honor starts with, first of all, the thought in your heart about the person. Then, the words. Then, the gifts. That if I want you to study that word honor, 
as when it comes to regarding the men that God has set over you, there is no honor without giving. The word is timeo. It's spelled like time in English, but it's pronounced timeo in the Greek. It's to put your resources as a matter of value to him that labor over you in the world. But that's not the subject. The subject now is this. Mark 11, 20 made us understand. He who says to the mountain, be thou removed, must believe what he told the mountain. Do you understand that? If you are saying to the mountain and you are not believing what, you see, at the point where you are saying to the mountain, listen to this very powerfully because the Holy Ghost just asked that I put this instruction here. At the point where you are saying to the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, who you should be believing is not the pastor, is you. You should have, you should have, you should have believed the pastor to the point where you are not able to say to the mountain. Are you getting my point? It's like God saying to you in Mark, uh, in Hebrews uh, 13 and verse 5, where he said that you should let your conversations be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. He said, for I have said, I will never leave you none forsake you. I said that, said. You see, he's on his past tense. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? His own here is what? Past tense. I said. It says so that you can what? Say. Your say now is present tense. Are you understanding that? There's a point where you hear what I'm preaching. There's a point where you hear the prophecy out of my mouth. And believe it. But your believing it must now be proven in your believing you when you are speaking. So I'm saying at the point of you speaking to your challenges, it's not because you believe Pastor Tobori, but it was because you believed what I taught you, because it's not even believing me. Because you believe what I taught you, you are now bold enough to stand to believe what you are about to say, because what I taught you built a conviction inside you. What I taught you built a believing system. Do you understand? It built a belief. So if you don't believe you, you can't be in faith. So all this low self-esteem is one of the things that you need to put out of your life so that your faith will become effectual. Some people, believers who just believe they are not the main one, you don't say, you don't say some people, some people get up born there. Who be those people? When they say you, you like this, you have been accepted into the beloved, Ephesians 1.6. You are the beloved son in whom he is well pleased. You, like this. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You, like this. Say, I believe me. I, believe I can't hear you. Say, I believe me. I believe, me. I believe myself. I believe, I believe my words. I believe my words. You know the way worry, I believe, I believe that guy die. Now you need to believe yourself, live. <laughs> Say, I believe myself, leave. I believe my words. Say it again. Say, I believe my words. So it is a law. So the thing you should know about law is that the knowledge of the law puts you in advantage. But the ignorance of the law makes the law start working against you automatically. In real life, you cannot break a law. Law breaks you. You can only violate a law, and your violation of the law gives the law the power to break you. When you violate the law, the law will break you. And one thing you should know is this. Whether you are rising or falling in life depends on how much cooperation you are giving to the laws of life. Whether you are rising or falling in life, it depends on how much cooperation you are giving to the laws of life. You know, my, 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 my problem is when I begin to see young people who are frustrated that their lives are not working, but when you see the way they are, they are living, you know, this guy is not supposed to go anywhere now. Have you not seen people that you know that they're not going to go anywhere? Eh? Even if you, are not, you don't need to go and tell the person and see the way they go. But you know, you don't see some people, relax. In your secondary school, there were some people you had high hopes for, true or false. In your university, there's some people that you just, the way that they go, you know, say, like, they go succeed. <laughs> We still did school, but you just, if you said, like I said, this guy, true or false, 
Why did you have that as passion about that person? It's the way the person was going, right? He put in some work. Gigo, garbage in, garbage out. Some people are frustrated in life that is not working, and you are wondering, what have you done that is not working? We just rather condemn other people, but that's not the day, that's not the day. Today's not the day rather for those kind of things. The laws work. The law of confession always works. How did God create this earth? Light, be. The laws work. Say confession work. My confessions work. The Bible says to us in John 1, John 1 from verse 1, he said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He said, the same was in the beginning with God. He said, all things were made by him. All things were made by him. The word is the SI unit for creation. All things were made by him. He said, and without him was nothing made that was made. So God creates nothing outside the world. The world is a spiritual manufacturing tool. It's what I told you in earlier in the series, that words are not used for primary for communication. The primary and the first use of words is creation. God is the one that first uses words. It's to create. It's to create. You know, you know, the world do not only create. The Bible goes on to say in that uh, John 1 from verse 4, that word now became, the same word was not the light of men. The spoken word always brings light. No confession, no light. You are as confused as your mouth is closed. You, your part is as lit up as your mouth is open. Did you hear what I said? You are as confused as your mouth is closed. Your words supply power. You know power. I'm talking about lights. Now, you know they say they don't, power don't go. Power outage. Your words supply your life power. Job 22, 28, the Bible says, and thou shalt decree a thing. Put it on the screen. I want every eye to see this. Job 22, 28, thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine unto thy ways. Look at it. Now, you see the scripture, we quote it. We quote it when we are talking about other people's words. But once you look at it, it is the man that decreed the thing, it is to him that the thing will be established. It is the man that decreed the thing, it is his path that will be lit up. He says, you shall decree a thing, Daniel, and that thing shall be established unto who? You! What you have decreed can never be established to you. What you have not opened your mouth to say can and light up your part. The part is as lit up as you open your mouth. You can't, you can't, see, you can't. When David in Psalm 119 verse 162, I saw a different perspective to that confession when he said that I rejoice at the word as one who has found great spoil. He said, you know, David was a man of war. So when you look at David's life as a man of war, fighting battle, spoils, as you see his terminology, spoils are what they get when they conquer a nation. So he said that your word given to me, or whether I should go or not, is what delivers spoils to me. <laughs> Do you understand that? Your word delivers what? Spoils. So he says, I rejoice at thy word. David said, every time you give me your word, I find great spoils. David said, shall I go? Shall I pursue? <laughs> you know that if God tells him to go, he is richer. Do you, do you people understand that? What do you think is spoils? We're talking about horses, land, gold, silver. Are you understanding that? So the king said, if, I, if he said I should go, we are richer. Do you understand that? If God just said, I should go like this, spoils. The word in your mouth always deliver what? Spoils. You want more, you confess more. You want more, you will confess more. We began to look at this subject of confession last week. Uh, put some, some dot some eyes and cross some T's and we'll go. 
Say, I believe my words. Say it again one more time. Say, I believe my words. I believe my words. So if you don't believe your word, no matter who you believe, no matter who you believe, your faith will not produce results if you don't believe your own words. Confession is homologio, which is submitting your will by verbal confirmation to the will of somebody else. That's really what homologio means. That is, you are agreeing with God with, when it comes to what he said about you. So in confession, you are saying what he said. And the Bible said to us in Hebrews 4, 14, he said, hold fast your confession. And in Hebrews 10, 23, he said, hold fast your confession of faith without wavering, for faithful is he that promised. Faithful is he that promised. God is true to his word. He will not deny himself. All you need to do now, your only part, your only responsibility is that you have to open your mouth. You have to open your mouth. So you have to affirm what God says. Affirm it by you saying it. Affirm it by you saying it. For the life of Jesus, we saw that there was nothing that he did. There was nothing that he did that he didn't say first. The angel at the tomb said, for he's not here, he is risen as he said. Everything you would experience in the kingdom, you would experience it to the extent that you acknowledge it verbally. Philemon 1.6. The Bible says the communication of your faith may become effectual. It says by the acknowledging, by the way you acknowledge every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So the affirmation of these promises must be on your lips constantly, without wavering. What is wavering? You don't say it today and not say it tomorrow. Without wavering, you don't say it today and say something contradicting tomorrow. There is a penalty for wavering. There's a penalty for inconsistency. Are you all listening to what I'm saying? We have to teach you the complete thing. There's a penalty for inconsistency. The Bible says to us in James 1, 6 and 7, it said that man that wavered, First of all, if you have something, because verse 6 says, let him ask in faith, without or nothing wavering, nothing. Let there be no contradicting thoughts on the inside of you. Do not entertain contradicting what? Thoughts. Are you all getting my point? You see, and let me, let me not, oftentimes when we get to this junction, we will not begin to advise you against people who speak Contrary, right? But I want to twist it today. I want you to be the friend that never speaks contrary to your friends. Do you understand that? Be the friend, you know, listen to me. It's not, in less than 10 days ago, my friend, who I always hint here, he called me and said, so brother, not judge me. From now to the end of 2023, I want to buy myself a G wagon. You know what I said? Buy it. Do you understand that? This is a thought swelling up in the heart of this man. Eh? He's, he's building something. Then he now calls you and say, from now to so and so, I want to buy a private jet. He said, now nah, why? <laughs> you want if now? <laughs> what if I want the private jet? <laughs> What are you doing? You are destroying. Do you understand that? That guy called you to build what was happening. Do you understand that? Some of you need to understand where certain of your friends call you. Huh? They are in a place where they just need some form of booster. So when the guy said, boss, before now to the end of 20, I want to buy myself a jewel, I say, you buy it. You will get it. The doors will open. Bigger deals will come. Are you getting what I'm saying? Bigger deals will come. So it's not only that you say, I will say to you, don't sit around people. Sometimes some of you are the source of unbelief. And you need to stop being the source of unbelief. 
Why should your friend not build a house? Are you getting what I'm saying? Why shouldn't your friend buy another car? And younger men, why shouldn't you and your guys buy cars? As the year is coming to an end, you are going to some of you that are young, because I hope you they add motor for your, confu- for your, for your confession. Add that, add that, add that, add that, because when will they come out, go anybody bed in next year, and not go pick you? Add down. And they tell you now, add down, add motor for your confession. Uh-huh. Are you getting my point? I'm telling this. Stare up one another unto what? Good works. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. When some men in this church need to tell themselves that, come on, I give five years. When the parents are five years old, me, I will not visit you if you still stay. And so, see, two ways. If you believe, say amen. amen. If it is a struggle, but you must still believe, say, bid me to come. Amen. Do you understand? Let me tell you the truth. The principle of bid me to come is that when you see somebody do something you ought to be doing, but at the time it is still beyond you. Huh? You say, Lord, if it be you, bid me. I wanted to show a seed once. Huh? I wanted to show a seed once. I realized that, okay, I realized that um, my sermonic mind, which means the way I interpret scripture and teach scriptures, nobody has influenced it as big as Pastor Bodrum. Nobody. Huh? If you listen to me preach, you can hear Pastor Bodrum inside the preaching. It's okay. So I said, I want to sow a seed, $1,000. When you hear somebody sow $1,000 seed, I say, ah, this thing look big, oh. But I say, Lord, bid me to come. That was two years ago. We don't sow the seed pass. Are you getting what I'm saying? So once you, some of you, they hear people, they buy out, view that. No, they feel say a big pass you. Eh? At the time where you hear it and it's bigger than you, say, Lord, bid me. I like, you know, Peter saw Jesus walk on water. Did he big pass him? Do you understand that? For a full life, you never see human being walk on water once. See, when you hear somebody give so a seed that is bigger than you, eh? don't, cr- don't, don't just cringe and say you're living. Say, Lord, one day, this will be me. Say they want to build church, 30 million. And, 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 and want, Lord, bid me to come. And that's my prayer for all of you. Say they want to do church, 30 million. If 30 people in the church say, I will give 1 million. They never do the church. What's all this? this thing? Huh? What's all this? <laughs> What's all this? So want to be preaching to uh, children and poor people forever. God forbid. God for really bid. Amen. Amen. So when you hear big things, say, Lord, this thing. You know, I saw Cosmos Maduka. He was, apparently, he was, he's one of the top 10 funders of the series Chosen. How many of you know Chosen, the series? So I saw him at the DC, huh? and um, he went with his son-in-law, who is my guy, McFoy. I when did he hear the kind of figure? Hmm? When you hear the kind of figure that they are calling in the neighborhood, eh? People are giving millions of dollars to do things for the kingdom globally. You see what I'm saying? Globally. No, we're not the wrong. The prayer is, Lord, bid me to come. Amen. Amen. So when I say you will get house, you will get land, you will get this, no, let anybody cringe you. We they come. Are you hear what I'm saying? You the kind of seed you will sow. Huh? The kind of giving you will give. It's not this one they are doing share at Christmas, you buy two clothes or three clothes. You can't say it. No, 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 no. You, only you go say, you know what? More do for 100 children. Say amen. amen. If you never feel old, like, say, bid me to come. <laughs> that, that man in Mark 9 say, Lord, I believe. Help thou. So you see it now. It's the same thing. That's how it works. All right, so back to it. So you have to affirm from your lips. 
constantly. James said to us, once you waver, he said, let that man not think he shall receive anything from the Lord. So if you look at James 1, 6 and 7, there is a man that does not have the right to think he will receive. Do you see it here? He said, let that man not think. And who is the man? The man who is inconsistent with his confession. Who is the man that has no right to be expecting something from God? The man who prayed today and will not pray tomorrow. He said, let him ask in faith, not what wavering. So you have to keep your confessions up. Job 6.25 says to us, how forcible are right words. How forcible are right words. That when you say the right words, they have what? Force. There are things that have not opened to you because you have not said the right words. I will put a balance in this first service about confession. What gives confession power? So I say this. I say it in my heart. I say it out here. And everyone sometimes repeat after me. I say that this 2021, we will do great things with what is. You say it. She say it. You say, it. let me tell you. We are not a church that robs the testimonies of people. Huh? But people are doing things in this church. Take her like that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. So some people are now doing great things with ease. Some people are yet to do great things with any ease. Or some are doing great things without ease. <laughs> you understand that? But what the difference? What gives confession power? Luke 6 from verse 43. Luke 6, 43. He said, For a good tree bringeth forth, bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. I'll read that again so we get it right. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. Neither doeth a corrupt tree bringeth forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his fruit. For of tongues men do not gather Figs that you can't go to a mango tree and begin to gather all rings. Simple. He said, none of a bramble bush gather their grapes. The same interpretation. Look at now verse 45, which is where we're going. He said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of for of, that is out of, the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. The point of this particular um, teaching, is good I give you the right impression before I give you context, is that Jesus was saying, be careful who you follow, because who you follow will reflect on your nature and then of the products of your life, the produce of your life, rather. So, Jesus is saying, good fruits show you that the tree is good. Do you understand that? Bad fruits show you that the fruit, the tree is either sickly or not good. So, there is no good tree which will produce bad fruits. There is no bad tree which will produce good fruits. So the fruit produced gives you evidence of the health of the tree. What I'm saying now as it relates to confession, the potency of your faith confession is directly tantamount to the health of your heart. Do you understand that? So we all can be saying the same thing, but we are going to have different experience based on the content of our heart. So, there's a way Jesus put it in, in, in Matthew's edition. In Matthew 12 and 34, Jesus rebuked a certain, a, a certain group of people. He called them vipers. Look at the word he used. Vipers are poisonous snakes. 
So Jesus is saying, you have poison in you. How dare you with the poison inside you that is being evil? Are you all seeing it there? You with this poison inside your heart, why are you speaking what is good and think your words will produce any good? Do you people hear me now? No matter how good the words you are speaking, if the contents of your heart, the environment, the atmosphere inside you is sour, your words will not bear the fruit it is supposed to produce. Right words spoken out of wrong hearts will always produce wrong results. The heart now becomes zero in mathematical equation. Huh? So, what we are saying is this. You make your confession 200 times a year, but 200 times zero is equals what? Zero. Does anybody get the math? Right confession, 365 days a week, a, a year, you are hitting it. Keeping watches, you are hitting it. But as long as there is poison, vipers, on the inside, 365 days of right confession times zero is also what? Zero. What make it potent? Your confession is a fruit of who you really are. What the Bible called the hidden man of the heart. It's not the one that you are hidden in church. You know, they should do church Oscars because people come to church and they are really acting. They are trying to project a personality. Huh? The truth is this. Drop the acting. Where you are struggling, say, I am struggling. Sincerity is a tool if you really want to grow. The man said, Lord, I believe. Help my what? Um, the man is not acting like I got this. In fact, I have taught you in this church that there is nobody in the Bible who took on any faith project and he got it to the end like he was the boss of it. Do you understand? Jesus, almighty Jesus. I think he's a, we should use only Jesus to explain that one. All his life, you know the way he was calling God? My father. Say, my father speaketh, he tato, I speak. My father. Every day, my father. He said, no man cometh unto the father except by me. Teach us to pray. Say, say our father. He said, you see me, you, are, you see the father. When circumstances hard, he said, is it possible for this cross to pass over me? If Jesus got to the point of sincerity with God, I don't know who exactly you think you are. Because any small people, you got this. You got this. Know your superpower, but know that you are not Superman. We all need help at, every, at some point in, in time. The only time Jesus called God, God, was when he was on the cross. <laughs> Eloi, Eloi. Lama, do you understand that this is Jesus who, huh? You say Abraham. Abraham was, uh, was a friend of God. You are singing Father Abraham. They tell, God meet Abraham with his wife for junction. Say to them, I'll give you a child. Abraham. Not be Abraham sleep with a guy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Huh? You are getting the math. So don't be boss of God. God is boss of you. The sooner you accept that he's the creator, you are the created the better for you. But at some point, you will go to him and say to him, if I have my way, if I have my way, all this church work, I not do it again. <laughs> but, but not my will. 
And every, what did God do in the case of Jesus? The Bible says an angel came and what? He strengthened him. So you need that strengthening as you go. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's not the idea where you begin to just, uh, well, how far? So I've, I've, I've heard it. I've, it means you are insincere. You never went to the faith walk. Those people inside the faith walk, they know that. They may say, he restored my soul. <laughs> you know it in me? My soul tired. <laughs> I reach where, you know what? <laughs> Bros. But he does restore our soul. That's the beauty of the God that we serve. It says, they that wait of the Lord shall what? They shall renew their strength. So, your heart is the bullet. Your heart is the cartridge holder. Your mouth is the trigger. Whether you are shooting blanks or live ammunition, determine on the content of your heart. Do we all understand that? So you say that I will live to a full and ripe old age. I will complete your releasing bullets. But what we are asking now, because it's not the, 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 the conclusion here is if what makes confessions what? Potent. So you say that I will complete my days on the earth. My eyes will not grow dim. As I grow old, my strength will not fail me. Those are faith confessions from the world. But we are saying to you, what determines the efficacy of those confessions is what is in your heart. So are you shooting blanks or you are actually shooting live ammunition? James 3.11 he said, a fountain we sent out from the same opening, both fresh and bitter water. No, it shouldn't be. It's not the same mouth you should be using. All of this is your thoughts. Say, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart. What is treasure? What is stored there? Are you all hearing what I'm saying? What are you storing in your heart? What are you storing in your heart? If you look at this, go back to Luke 6.45. If you look at Luke 6.45, there's a repetition of good. A good man out of the good treasure. Do you see that? A good man out of the good treasure of his heart. Bring get forth good fruits. But do you know out of the three good mentioned of this good man, it's only one good other people will see. The fruits. The good man, good treasure inside his heart. It's only the fruit. That's why they say by their fruits we shall what? Know them. So it is what you store in your heart. Thy word I buy. What I hidden in my heart that I may not what? Sin against you. Finally, Ephesians 4 and verse 29. Ephesians 4, 29. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment. Now, once you look at this particular text, the next verse in the King James omits the introduction because the next verse now is verse 30. Please give us verse 30. It says, and grieve not. Okay, it's here even. And grieve not. That word and there is kai. And that kai means this statement is connected to the previous. What it's really saying is, let no unwholesome word proceed out of your mouth. Which grieves, do you all understand what I'm saying? When you begin to, with your mouth, say certain things, you are grieving the Holy Spirit. So now, two things. Your confessions, when you are not praying, when you are not praying, 
impart the power of your words when you are praying. I want you to please write it. Your confessions, the things you say when you are not praying, they impact the power of the things you say when you are praying. That is why David in the Psalms, he prayed in Psalm 141 verse 3. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Over my mouth. So now we have taught confessions. But what I'm saying is this. You can confess all year long and just be shooting blanks. Check your heart. We'll stop here in the first service, but I'll give you this. I will beg you. Those of us who are first service guys, if you don't listen to the second service teaching, you miss a fine hold. Second service is too crucial. Those who can't stay, let them stay. Those who can't, make sure that today you play the teaching because extremely important to what we're doing. I'll start the second service from Galatians 5, 6. The Bible says, for faith worked by, by love. Then we'll begin to see again. Right confessions, right fasting, right praying, right church participation, right service in a group. If the state of the heart is sour, faith is powerless. Are you getting what I'm saying? All the confession will be to no avail. And for many of us, this may be what is missing. That's why October you have not gotten that thing. That is why. God is responsible for the nature of your new heart when you got saved. I'll give them a new heart. But you are responsible for the state of the heart. The state of the new heart. What have you put inside? What have you allowed to go inside? We will enter and talk about love. Faith always produces love. Faith always go in the direction of love. Without love, the vehicle of faith has no fuel. Some of the things some of you are fighting, you are fighting it to hinder other people's growth or knowing to you. Some of the things some of us are fighting for, you are fighting it, and when you get it, more lives will be destroyed if you get that progress. That's what he meant. So when you, he said you ask not, you have not because you ask not. He said when you do ask, he said you still don't receive because you were asking to consume it on your own lust. God is not going to fund in your life the destruction of his children. You get what I'm saying? So the second service will start, we start with motives that we enter instruction. Motive. Some of you now need to change why you want what you want. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Otherwise, the faith will still be powerless. Let's bow our heads, everyone. There's a song I would like for us to pray with. Just a minute. Search my heart, O Lord. Make it ever new. Change my heart, O Lord. May I be like you. That's the song. Everyone where you are, I want you to begin to say, Lord, search my heart. Show me me. Expose me to me. Show me the content of my heart. In shooting blanks. Have I really been shooting blanks? 
All those days I say, none shall lack her mate. Was it blank? Why was it so? Show me the thoughts that I may have allowed into my heart that have corrupted my heart. Lord, what are the things that have settled in me that have now become strongholds that are now exerting themselves contending with your knowledge inside me. Expose me to me. Lord, what things do I need to reflect with my mouth? What are the things that I have said, Lord? I want my faith to work. I want my faith to be productive. So, Lord, I come to you humble. Humble, Lord. Show me me. If there be any impurity inside of me, if there be any debris on my inside, Father, show me. Show me. Show me, Lord. Show me, Lord. Show me, Lord. Show me, Lord. Bore the Kelessing on a man Kelak Rubas at Moska. Zebri get down below or Bolish Sigre Commando Hopetela. Let's just sing that song twice, everyone. Sings my heart, oh Lord. He ever knew. Heart, oh Lord. May I be one time? Check my heart. Check my heart, oh Lord. Make it ever new. Let it always be fresh, ready to hear. Father, I ask, as your word enters and has brought light, I ask today that indeed everyone under the sun will receive the enabling of the Holy Ghost to submit themselves under your mighty hand and see the areas they need to repent so that their faith will be potent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's people who believe, we say a big amen. amen. Better than that. Amen. Wow. I can't wait for second service to start. I don't know how about you. Uh, but we want to take our offerings. We want to give. But uh, I have a job this morning, and my job is to not to preach another sermon, but to exhort us on our giving. Amen. So um, we've heard so much about giving. Uh, we've heard given its form of our worship. We give to honor the Lord. You know, we give because we love the Lord. Right? Uh, but this morning, I, I want to tell us something different about giving. Maybe that will change our perspective and our attitude on how we give in the little time that I have. Giving is a responsibility. The word responsibility is a compound word, two words. Response and ability. Giving is the ability to respond to a need, an urgency, or something that is of 
important. You know, so responding to a demand as well. So, but why should we give or who are we to give? Most importantly, when it comes to the house of the Lord, praise God. As we already know in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, it said, as every man proposes in his heart, let him give, right? So we know that we are supposed to give, but we don't give because we don't understand that it's not just a sacrifice or honor, but it's our responsibility. It is our job to give. It's our duty to give. It's our right to give. The reason why so is because we say that we are like God, right? The Bible says in the book of John 1, 4, verse 17, it says, As he is, so are we also. The Bible says in John 3, 16, like we all properly quote, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave. So if we say that as he is, so are we also, and in, and in First Peter, he has said that we are partakers of his divine nature, which means that we are God. The Bible says in Romans 8 that we have been adopted, means, means, means that we are sons and we are joined here with Christ Jesus. That it means that we are to give if God gave. Praise God. So we are given because it is our nature to give. It is in our DNA to give. So we give because we are God. We give because we are God's own. We give because we are his beloved. But there is an attitude to give, and I want us to look at that. So we'll look at the screen, and please, media, help me. First Chronicles 29. First Chronicles 29. So we're building a new facility. Praise God. Come on, we're building the mind. Come on, I want to hear you scream. We're building the mind. Say yes. Say yes. We're building the mind. Now, over there, we have the model of the mind. And what this reminds me of is how Solomon built the temple. It's so amazing how he did that. David was supposed to build a temple, but God said, because his hands were stained with blood, the son will build a temple. And in 1 Chronicles 28, we see that David gave all. David gave gold, silver, gold for gold, silver for silver, cedar for cedar. Whatever precious stone that there was, David gave all for Solomon to be able to build a temple. And in chapter 29, as we see, the Bible says, David said unto the congregation, that, and that's what I'm doing today, and Greg is speaking to the congregation of South CC this morning. So I'll read the scriptures, and then we'll take our confessions. He said, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon my son, whom alone God has chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace is not for man. The mine is not for man but for the Lord. Now I have prepared with all my mind for the house of my God the gold for things to be made of gold, the silver for things of silver, and the brass for things of brass, the iron for things of iron, and the wood for things of wood, orange stones and the stones to be set, glistering stone and of diverse colors, and all manners of precious stones and marbles, marble stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have my own proper good of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God, over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house. Even 3,000 talents of gold, of gold of ore, and 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the house without the gold for things of gold and the silver for things of silver and for all manners of work to be made by the hand of the artificer. And who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? So who is there to give? The sacrifice unto the Lord. And then the chief of the fathers of the prince of the tribe of Israel and the captains of the thousands and of hundreds and the rulers of the king's work offered willingly. They offered willingly and gave for the service of the house of God 5,000 talents, 10,000 drams and silver 10,000 talents and of brass 8,000 talents and 100,000 talents of our. And they with own precious stones were found, gave them to the treasures of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jehah generous. Verse 9, this is where I want us to see. It says, And the people rejoiced, for they that offered willingly, because with perfect art, they offered willingly to the Lord, and David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Says with perfect heart. We just heard God's word today that out of the abundance of their heart, the good treasures of their heart, so we're giving this morning willingly and with a perfect heart, we're offering willingly unto the Lord. Remember, we are also rejoicing as we give. Can we take our confessions?
Which one is clear from? Okay. Praise God. All right. So, um, our confessions. Father has an act of love, obedience, faith, worship, and gratitude. I bring my substance to you cheerfully. We are not cheerful. My gift now makes room for me, and I receive insight to recognize opportunities and make wealth. I declare that the work of my hands prosper and is ensured in you, and I receive abundance to bless the world and the prudence to save and invest. I declare increase over this ministry, increase over my house, and increase over all who is sowing right now. We receive the treasures of the earth and declare our bees are paid with ease. We receive all we need to do the will of God exceedingly and fulfill our ministry. Amen. Please, you can now give your offering. Hallelujah. Make sure you do that. Rejoice and praise God. Glory to God. Amen. So we want to recognize those who have fellowship with us for the first time. It's today is the first time in Salt City. Please, we love you. Please, can you rise wherever you are? Come on, come on. If someone is saying, look around you, if you are seeing somebody for the first time, identify the person. How many kids? That guy, nothing new. His face is new now. It's your guy, all right. All right. Praise God. All right, so that means we have more work to do, more job to be done. Amen, Sud City. So we'll take our announcement this morning. So this month of November, as a church, we're expecting something huge. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I believe we should be rejoicing now. We're expecting something huge. Hooch. Okay, no, it's hooch. Hooch. Something hooch. <laughs> All right. So uh, for the from the whole of September, November, sorry, we'll be having our fasting and prayers for 21 days. Okay. So please, let's, let's put our hands together for that. Amen. So we were having our fasting and prayers for 21 days and uh, sorry, just a minute. Okay, so um, our fasting and prayers begins on the 1st of November, which begins tomorrow. And amen. So we'll be having 14 days fast. So from the 1st of November, we'll begin our fast until the 14th of November. But our prayers continue till the 21 days of November. And then our faith seminar is on the 20th of November. Amen. So for other details, we come for the faith seminar. The faith convention is coming. That's something huge. Praise God. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus. Can we just stand up, everyone? Let's go home. How many of you have been blessed this morning? Okay. That's a church word. How many of you have been instructed properly this morning? Alright, you, you have a responsibility. Invite someone to church next week, Sunday. So the fast is tomorrow till the 14th. It's a full day fast. And we'll be broadcasting from morning and evening. So the prayers will be happening for the 14 days here. But you can connect online. And like I said, for the 21 days, we'll be doing the seed planting. Faith must be treated as a seed. The Bible says if you have faith as a grain. So the faith is not planted. The faith is not potent. So what we want to do is declare into 2021. And some of us, it's high time you cross from coming to church only on Sunday, like Tobore Flourish, and be a believer that does the work. All right? So 21 days of seed planting. We'll just be declaring God's word. So there will almost always be something airing on Misla to help you as you fast. Very, very important. Our faith, our faith seminar 20th November is a joy meeting. So make sure you come in and we keep our joy to the end. All right, tell someone you are the salt of the earth. Tell another man you are the savour of men. And tell a third person, go add flavour to the city. God bless you all.